The views and opinions of this podcast are solely our own, with no direct intention to offend or upset. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. He's mm. laughing already, and we've just started recording. That's because we are What's the Script Scottish Movie Review Podcast Series 4, Episode 23. There you go. See, I'm available for all voiceover advertisements at a minimal fee. My name's Craig. With me, as always, is Big Chris. Chris, how are you, son? Yes, ticket to boo. Looking forward to this. Bonanza of fabulous impressions and fun times. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why. But what was, what was your pick, mate? Uh, before we get into the, the usual spins, tell the people what you picked last week, what we're reviewing today. Oh, yes, well, I picked the movie Average Too Far. I don't think many people have seen it. I thought you were worried on me. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a smash and refollow and it goes under the radar. So. Radar being widely used in World War Two. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Excuse yeah. me, sir. Yes, I have a bleep on my screen. Hmm. Okay, Atkins. <laughs> Incoming, sir. Uh, uh, take the machine gun, won't you? <laughs> Clear the path. Uh, uh, Atkins. Yes, sir. Do let Jerry know that uh, we won't be taking him today. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, it's going to be plenty it's of that. Brilliant, man. Good old 40s, 40s style British stiff upper lip man in the face of adversity. Get that kettle boiled. It's <laughs> fuck. Uh, no biscuits, no crumpet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had any. You know, crumpet in quite some time, sir. Yeah, we can think about that. We go yeah. home. Mate, see that? There's a picture out there. I usually see it on Twitter. And it's uh, British people having se- sex. And it's, oh, rather. <laughs> oh, it's, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> uh, uh, <it's>, <laughs> even the chat, sex chat, the posher you are and the more English you are. Always the best one that ever got me, and I can't remember where I heard it first. Was in, like porn woman, oh, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. But posh English woman go, oh, I'm arriving, I'm arriving, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even the guy who initiated that coitus, that's the way, that's probably the word to use. Would you like to exchange in some coitus? Yeah, yeah, oh. mother. For I'm going to, I'm going to mm-hmm. ravish you. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's a fucking thing at all. Recently, it's, it's been on TikTok for some reason, and people are just lip syncing it. But it's that old, that old comedian guy, and he's talking about eating cold beans with Joanna fucking Lumley or something. What right. is that? He's like, oh, I, I like to have cold beans, and she's like, and so do I. He goes, oh, with an eye, eh, with a fork of a spoon. A spoon. I use a fork. It's <laughs> fucking hilarious, man. Oh, I need to see it. I'll have a fucking TikTok anywhere. I need to see that. I'll send you after this. It oh, fucking tickled me so bad, man. Please do. Oh. And I like to believe as well that the uh, posh women congratulate their lover after the fact. Well done. <laughs> well, well done, our sport. <laughs> you gave that a right good effort. I should very much like to uh, see you again, Margaret. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> this is so fucking unwar, follow me, like, it's just, what? it's it's that accent, and it's very, here you go, like, serious World War Two. and carry on films use the exact same language. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> but mate, where did that accent go? You know what I mean? Where did it know. go? Because it's all, yes, that's um, very sporting of you. I'll see you in the morning for a cup of tea. And now it's, all right, geezer. <laughs> Put this on a broom. Oh, Jesus. Aye. It was, it was, English was all very much a muchness, probably apart from the Scouse and the Geordies, but then they all just started to break their way into the accents and factions, yeah. and, and that's great. They have their place, but I would love to just cross the border and everybody to talk like that. I think it'd be, I would move to England. There you go. I'd, I'd enjoy that well, very much. Well, hello there, Bruce. Hello. Yeah. Uh, fucking <laughs> oh, superb man. <laughs> I must I must go to the corner shop. Oh really? Yes, I am running low on uh, pouch tobacco for my pipe, you see. <laughs> yes, I'm going down the corner shop, you see, to get myself a couple of cans of soupies. A box of snuff, perhaps. Arkwright. Um, Hello, Arkwright. Hello, sir. What can I have today? <laughs> Do you have my papers there, Arkwright? I do indeed, sir. All four. <laughs> Splendid. What's the end to this? Everything cost one in six. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know old money. I don't. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell, man. I'll leave it or no. Decimalization <laughs> was 1970. I wasn't born until 1978. Had to think <laughs> about that there. Uh, so I don't know old money, but I just think it's funny to see Old comics, that with like one D, no, I don't know. Sam, it's a D. It's a fucking. You just turn up a letter. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> oh, superb man! Fucking oh. superb. Simpler anyway, times. folks, hi. <laughs> Simpler times. A very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you once again for tuning in to what's the script, the Scottish Movie Review Podcast, and thanks again to Quint. The up and coming Glasgow band just missed out on supporting Liam Gallagher this Thursday at the Hydro, where I'm going. Yeah, hey! Oh, for it, man, for it, oh, for it. Because I'm in a bum, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, no. Uh, got to see that. And thank you, Quint. Um, you can find us, as always. <laughs> so here we go. Three minutes to go, mate. Three minutes to go. Mm. You can find us on all the audible and visual platforms, including YouTube, Twitter, I'm not calling it exercise that, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, all the jobs. But we're now, every now and again, without even looking for us, you will come across us, you'll trip, up, you'll trip over us, you'll burn your hand on us, you'll, uh, <laughs> you'll catch us in your zipper. Oh! Where else <laughs> might they get us, Chris? Do tell. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. We've ran out of places. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, you know, I mean, we're in, we're in the summer right now, but assuming we all go back to our old winter jackets. Oh, aye. You know what I mean? And most times you go in there, you're in the pockets, and you go, what the fuck is that? And you go, there's a wee score pound. And you go, oh, there's a wee score. And then all the pockets and and see so you go right into the corner, right under the use, or right into that wee bit of dust, and in that wee hole in your pocket, that's where you'll find what's the script. <laughs> <laughs> right in between the two crumbs for the last fucking hobnob you stored away in that pocket for the winter. Aye, when well, you were pocket munching. <laughs> but aye, that's, that's where you'll find us. That is where you'll find us. There we go. And again, in the glint, and a hamster's eye. And <laughs> fucking hamster. The twitch of a rabbit's nose. Oh, and geez. every outrageous accusation. That's where you'll find what's the script. Oh, I like that. I like that last one. That's brilliant, folks. So there we go. Yes, two more episodes after this one to find out just where you might know mean to find us. And I need to get my thinking caps on. It's my turn next week, I need to think of somewhere. So there we go, folks. You have no excuses. You can find us, you can't find us, but you will always find us. What's the script podcast? So thank you very much. Shout outs and mentions to our homeboys at the Seismic Cinema, Diabolical and the Wreckfast Club. Um, 
obviously there's others there that we watch and listen to on a regular basis. You know who you are. We'll start shouting you when you start shouting us. That's how it works. We don't need a collective. We are the collective. We are Bog. I'm <laughs> only kidding. I'm only kidding. A big shout out to the podcast collective, man. He's all, he's a growing, he's a growing exponentially. He let the fucking what's that film, The Blob? This gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's an old horror film, isn't it? Blob or the thing? Aye, uh, the blob. There's the blob and there's the stuff. I know. I don't know what line <laughs> came first. In fact, see, <laughs> see if I'm right. They're remaking the blob. They've the, they've remade it. Have they? Aye. They remade it in the eighties. Well, I think it's, it's getting fucking remade again then. Oh joy. Fucking joy, because there's nothing that they can do. They've not done before on that one, have they? How, how can we reboot this to make it different? Well, <laughs> I don't know. But we might need to rename it, because you can't call it a blob anymore, because blob is derogatory. <laughs> that makes him sound fat and as if he's got a condition. If he's got a condition, he fucking eats everything. A blob. He's like, my big cousin Davey, he's a fucking blob. The man we call the male Hoover. Remember, remember Nunu? Henry? <laughs> no, remember Nunu? Naughty Nunu? If he fucking Teletubbies? Uh, Just hoover yeah, him up, man. Uh, he's got a bit of a drug problem, that boy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, before we get into A Bridge Too Far, which is the film, obviously, we've told you that Chris picked last week, let's find out from Chris what he watched last week and what took his eye. What have you been up to? What have you been watching? Apart from the football. Mm. Well, I was still kind of on my wee worry films and that, you know. I watched uh, Kelly's Heroes and that. I've not watched oh, anything smashing. new. But I was, when doing, I just, a, a rabbit hole of weirdness. I watched uh, Sunshine, the Danny Boyle, Boyle film. Have you seen that, that one? Uh, Kelly and Murphy. Oh, no, no, I've not seen it. Uh, no, they, they, need to, they need to restart the sun there. It's all right. It's a sci-fi, isn't it? It's not. It's not. Uh, I end up watching uh, Riddick. I know. Don't know why. I just I perused through the, the Blu-rays and went, oh, that'll do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I watched uh, Heat. Because that final shooter is just smashing. So it is. You just can't it. whack it. I gotta tell you, you stand in my way. I won't hesitate. Not for one second. I won't, I, I won't hesitate. And I gotta tell you, you're in my way. I won't hesitate to fuck you in that great ass. <laughs> oh, fucking brilliant. See Val Kilmer in that? I like to knock, I like to punch his cunt in that film, man. I know. Well, see, I'm saying that, I, I, I don't know if it's a joke, but apparently all the way through that film, his character was supposed to be taking cocaine, which was to explain that. But to I don't know if that's him. To explain his gambling? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I was like, uh, okay. Uh, but you can't even whack it. See for what it is, it's a uh, Smashing film, and then obviously the big shoot at the end is fucking something else because it oh, just it feels very real. Know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, Robert uh, De Niro's love interest in it, a teacher. It's a teacher, aren't she? Or, or, or she a bookstore fucking worker or something? Ah, uh, yeah, I think it's a books, maybe I. <sighs> no, I just, <laughs> just. And then seeing Robert De Niro kissing a woman, I know he kisses a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it has been instructed, kiss her, eh? aye. <laughs> no passion on his face, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the woman that plays uh, Bill Kilmer's wife in it, the actress whose yeah. name escapes me, and that is shocking. Uh, I've actually been in her company in real life. Very nice lady. I can't tell you where or how, but nothing seedy, you know what I mean? It was just a. She's a very nice lady. Very nice lady. Uh, and else, mate? What else? Yeah. No, I mean, I think that was it. I think that's where the madness went. Oh, tell a lie. 
tell a lie for some reason, and I don't know why. I just had to watch Chief or Buy the Dozen, and I make no apologies for it. <laughs> no, at least, fact, at, you know least at least tell me it was a Steve Martin one. I it was, I it was that That's one. Right. Uh, I might even watch the second one the day. There you go. Tom for all you all good. Wait, what's, he, what's he watching that for? Because I fucking do what I want, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you must have been fucking dying. You must have been at a right low ebb. Uh, it's actually, it's actually uh, not a bad wee film, isn't it? No, I think it's quite, quite cute, man. It's fucking, I remember seeing it when it came out. It was one of the ones that we often talk about where I went to the old video shop and bought the X-Rentals for a couple of quid and all that, and that was, I think I bought that one. I really did. Uh, it's, these wee, these films have got a wee purpose, not I mean, because it's it's no, uh, I, it, it must have been strategic for me anyway, because obviously <laughs> what we've discussed in the past, see when you're hungover, and for some reason you put, I mean the first time I watched Coco, I was hungover, and I oh, swear yeah. to Christ that was nearly the end of me, know what I mean? So you need to, you need to negotiate these kind of films, and cheaper but it doesn't isn't really that sad, oh. real art. Sitting there having a, a crying wank, know what I mean? <laughs> and your and your Spider Man costume. If people don't already know, Coco is one of my go tos. Me and the, me, me and my my kids fucking yeah. know every song, every word off the heart. It's one of the best soundtracks ever. And if you like Coco and you haven't figured and you hadn't seen it already, if you go into Disney Plus, there's an audience with, and they go to the Hollywood Bowl in America. It's a big live uh, like act, and they all sing the songs and all that, and the audience is there. It's mm. fucking brilliant, man. Absolutely brilliant. And I didn't even know that Benjamin Bratt was Ernesto de la Cruz. What a voice, mate. Benjamin Bratt. Right. You know what I mean? Yep, definitely. But uh, that, was, that, that was me, mate. Sitting there with Cheaper about a Dozen, Steve Martin, having a, a good old time there. You know what I mean? Lying, rough. But, but enough about my views, my eyeball delights. What were you into? I watched quite a lot of things this week. One, no, I'm all kidding. Uh, I've got it down here, right? See the first thing I watched? Masterminds. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a film. I don't know if it's a series. So there you go. I, it must have been that good that I do not have a fucking clue what it is. But I wrote it down. <laughs> it started, so I'll finish. Beep, beep, beep. Definitely wasn't that. So, moving on. I'll, I'll need to set up. I need to Google that after and see what the fuck it was. Um, Dark Matter was a series on Apple. Um, and it was all right. It was good. It was very thought-provoking and quite in-depth about a guy invents this doorway to get into multiple universes and just it's hard to explain you know I mean get a watch uh, what else? There, I mean, there's a book there's a book oh right I didn't even know it was it was an adaptation mm-hmm. for the book because Big Scar's got in it Big Uncle Owen for the prequels is in it um, Jennifer Connelly's in it who I enjoy very much very much yeah. mm. give me some <laughs> um, <laughs> I, st- I went back and rewatched series three of the Umbrella Academy because series four's coming up. And although I've got great issues with series three of Umbrella Academy, mainly because it was rewritten for an actress, mm. actor now, um, which I just think is fucking. Anyway, doesn't matter. I rewatched it and uh, still a good series, but. It was done wrong. Uh, and then I've started watching Doom Patrol, mate. That's fucking so good. Is that the one, uh, was it Brendan Fraser, uh, voices the big robot guy? Aye. It's a spin-off for Teen Titans. Uh-huh. That's fucking so good, man. So in your face and sweary and gory and... No whole bars. It's a bit like fucking the Punisher on that respect. It's really good. Brendan yeah. Fraser is fucking smashing on it, smashing. And then I'll just finish off by saying that I watched Civil War. 
and I just no, just wasn't so good, man. I know what we're trying to do. I just don't think it was done very well until the last forty odd minutes. Really don't, man. And plus, Kirsten Dunst was in it, and I f- we know everybody that knows what's the script know about me and Kirsten. The most pleasing thing about the film was her getting fucking done in, getting shot in slow motion through the lens of a camera clicking. I thought, that's fucking art. I could hang that shit in my wall. You know what I mean? And do you know what? Do you know what? Even in a fucking mad multiverse, because it was through the lens of a camera in slow motion, imagine it was Peter Parker taking it. Oh, yeah. I see what you've done there. Get it rude, you MJ. You're a cow. So that's, I'll, I'll leave it there because I started watching something else last night that we'll talk about it next mm-hmm. week because it started off splendid. But no, but it wasn't it. Fucking wasn't it. I can like, I'll nobody watch that shite. Tell you that. <laughs> nah, I've, I've seen, I've seen enough of the internet going after they're not about the acolyte. And I can honestly say I'm not interested in watching it at all. So, nah, nah, I'm leaving I mean, hate on it. it. I'm just going to go and watch it. I, it wasn't even just this. I know like it's all the fucking woke stuff that's getting all the the, the attention, but well, she's a writer Jedi. and director. Came out on three Aye. or four different talk shows and call it that. What the Aye. fuck are you doing? Star Wars isn't it? Star Wars has been as diverse as anything on the telly for nineteen seventy fucking seven. It's full of mm. aliens and beings for different ends of the galaxy. It couldn't be any more diverse if it fucking tried. But now you've got the writer and director coming out and telling you, oh, it's the gayest Star Wars ever. Super gay and all that. What the f- Who cares? You <laughs> fucking idiot. It you, wasn't that for me, mate. You weren't gay when you <laughs> were was... fucking Epstein's cock, weren't you? <laughs> it wasn't Epstein, what'd you call him? Or Weinstein. Weinstein, aye. <laughs> wasn't it? Weren't you gay then, weren't you, you fucking... Okay. Cunt. Uh, uh, it was just the whole see a, a, a Jedi getting stabbed with a wee knife and what's been happening recently is people have been getting stabbed with lightsabers and surviving and I went nah I think, I think, I'll, I think I'll check out here look okay <laughs> no I mean and I mean, when I say wee knife look a knitting needle would have been like a mere deadly weapon really? so but hey ho, as, as the road are gone, doing fire on. You just enjoy that. You just enjoy that. <laughs> anyway, that's us leaving. Watch that enough, fuck's sake. So, from one franchise that started in 1977, let's go to a film which appeared in 1977, and it's the one you picked, sir. A bridge too far. Tell the people a little bit about it and why you picked it, mate. Yes. Well, it. <laughs> Oh, but uh, aye. aye, it's a film directed by Richard Attenborough, and again, oh, it's an epic, isn't it? It's what fucking three hours long. But <laughs> aye, I think this is maybe one of the first films of its kind to kind of show you there was fuck ups on the side of the Allies. You know what I mean? Because like most films, like even like the like Great Escape and all that, it was like fucking the guys getting out there doing it. And you know what I mean? This is like right. the first. You know what this reminded me? Black Hawk Down. So I was like, ah, this is worth watching this. Well, because that's a fuck up as well, isn't it? Know what I mean? The plan was get in there, get out, get the guys, and be up the road before tea and all that. This is very much the same. Because it's and there's like a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of nods to how this could have been prevented or all, and how this they disregarded intelligence and other stuff just to get this done with. Uh, so, but I think it was like criticised for that stuff as well. Know what I mean? How dare you fucking show this side of things that we were not great and all that stuff? So. Uh, Fuck. If anybody thought that we, we became victorious in a world war by not having the odd mistake here, no, not the odd mistake, but mm. we weren't infallible in doing it, then they weren't a fucking they weren't shot, you know what I mean? Uh, for anybody that's not seen this film like I hadn't, uh, in a nutshell, 
bloody big nutshell. In a nutshell, the synopsis says the Allied armies uh, concocted a plan to win World War II at Arnhem in Holland. But disaster ensues when the area surrounding them, including the key bridges in Germany, are loaded with armoured assaults. So, Admiral Akbar was there shouting, It's a trap! <laughs> Nobody was listening to him, but were they? Nobody was listening to him. No. Ah. Uh, like no, it is. Uh, it was all a, all a big grand plan, and it was to end the war quicker than it was. But it's one thing, having stuff wrote down on paper and actually doing it. So, ah, uh, that's very true. So you said that it was directed by Richard Attenborough. Would you like to take a drink of water and give me maybe just thirty people that were in the film as well? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I could, I could do you one better. <laughs> I know right, that's so, why I was. Doing it. You know, first of all, we got Sean Connery, we got Doc <laughs> Bogard, we've got Anthony Hopkins, Michael Caine, Gene Hackman, Robert Redford, James Caan. Edward Fox, Lawrence Olivier, Denham Elliott, Ryan O'Neill, Elliot Gold, Alan Armstrong, Maximilian Schnell, Paul Copley, Ben Cross, Michael Byrne, and John Ratzenberger. To name but a few, by the way. If you want to see the world's biggest cast ever, go into IMDb or Wikipedia and search the shit out of that, and you'll see other big names that were failed to mention. Do you know what I mean? Yep. You've even on the form side of things, do you know what I mean? That you'd probably get 10 of the, the most prominent 15 actors that have been in every World War film for a German or a Dutch uh, point of view. I, but I, like you, I put in Maximilian because his name just falls right off the tongue so, so well, man. Oh, hello, Maximilian! <laughs> uh, oh, I know who that is. That... Is the the woman's da in Deep Impact? See where they're on the beach together? When the big tsunami's that, coming? With the beard? I know, that's him. Aye, that's him, mate. But, but he's French, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I know. That's, uh, there you go. I love that film. Fucking love that film. <laughs> oh. Might be on a list, that film. Might be on a list, I'll tell you. Uh, Aye, so there you go, folks. What a cash, man. What was the, the monies involved, mate, that you've wrote down? Well, according to the interwebs, it was $27 million, and it brought in $50.7 million. So, again, for me, it made money, but I don't know if they went on today's standards when it comes to profitability and all that stuff. But... Well, it, it's a double whammy for me, so it's as fucking good as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, can he, can he ask for more than that? It's like giving somebody a pound and I'm giving you two back. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's your pound <laughs> plus another pound. Do you like that? I do fucking like that. I can now get two Asda trolleys. Mm. Double buggy in the Asda. Look at me. <laughs> Yesterday, it had been uh-huh. just one trolley. But today, it's double buggy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just it in layman's terms for you simple bastards out there like myself. Um, uh-huh. So... Obviously, it was adapted from uh, a book as well, based on a true story. Um, mm-hmm. And it's in English, German, and Dutch. Uh, unless you watched my uncut version, which was pristine, pristine to watch. Didn't have any fucking subtitles, but did it? No. <laughs> but I kind of got the gist, if you know what I mean. Um, Chris, on IMDb, it got a 7.4 out of 10, which is very respectable. And Rotten Tomatoes, 59% out of 100%. Mm. See, again, I don't Let's know say. if this boils down to... Aye, I don't know if this, this boils down to the criticism yet again. Because, again, apparently, they didn't, they, they didn't really like this being out there. That you had a, a big fuck-up. And... He's like disregarded people's lives and all that stuff. And I think that's what all that shit's done to. Because, see, for watching it, the acting's good, the action's good. The fucking, when they start shelling stuff at, at the beginning, it looks so fucking real. You would think you were just watching a real battle. You know right. what I mean? So, there can be 
it can't be doing anything along the lines. So I'm just wondering if it's people's like kind of not like political leanings, but something to that kind of standard where that's where they start writing. You know what I mean? Because all the criticism I read about this was nothing today with the film. So, mm -hmm. I I like that way the fact that there's obviously relatives of the people that maybe needlessly died uh, at Aye. that time that didn't know the truth, and uh, the truth the truth will out as they say. And uh, Mister Government doesn't like that shit. You know what I mean? So, because it's like, like again for people that's not seen it, they've been trying to do this plan. But six attempts or something, and they've put it off for weather or one thing or another. And this wee guy does an intelligence sweep thing and sees fucking tanks and X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? That shouldn't he be there. Right. And instead Wait. of stopping the operation again, they go, no, here, listen, this right. is fucking happening. Not not only did they go ahead, but I mean, I think there's about half an hour to go left in the film. They go for doing it at night, they doing it during the day, they doing it first thing. They're doing it at 10 o'clock. they get getting a phone call to say, midday then. No, I mean, it's Aye. just getting put back, put back. It's as if, like you say, fucking, I don't care. Super. Aye, we're going to fight Godzilla. There's only four days. It's happening. It's fucking happening. But we'll die. Aye. I know we'll die, but it's happening. Because it's... Can you see how we, like, at the beginning of the film, it's like a, a woman narrating, like, real footage. Uh, she's a and fucking... Apparently, Battle of laughs that cunt, aren't you? <laughs> and it's it's how like Montgomery and is it Oswald or something? But like, they were they were in nineteen forty four people went giddy as schoolboys nine <laughs> and the Allied troops were General Montgomery coming and yeah you like, fuck yeah. Right. yeah but what it lays down for you to, like, the groundwork for it really is, the two people in command of the armies wanted to be the first one to Berlin, practically. Right. So, that's, that's where you're kind of, and I'm, again, I'm wondering if that's where the criticism comes from. Like, it was a total disregard for fucking the ordinary man. I wanted the medal sort of thing, so. Aye. Even, in, even some of the portrayals of the higher ranks in this, for an allied point of view, Mere or less say casualties of war, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think I've wrote down in my notes later on about cannon fodder as well, um, which we'll get to. Um, can can I give you very quickly plane watch this week? Aye, aye, let's do it. I was Before like, get... there is so many winged articles in this. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get it off, off my chest before we get any further because. Obviously, I cannot tell you about all the, the aircraft used in this film because it was a vast body of aviation material in this movie. Now, you do have your uh, your pretty standard. I mean, an uneducated person would come to me and say, Craig, anybody can rhyme off a Luftwaffe, a B-1 bomber, or indeed a Spitfire. And <laughs> I have done that. But I want to tell you about a couple of aircraft in this film that might have went under the radar. Uh -huh. Do you, uh -huh. Get that under the radar. There we go. No, <laughs> I like that. That was like a fu that was like fucking Wigfield too. That did sir. Um, there's a lot of coastal stuff in this. No, we do have a a body of aircraft called Coastal Command, and to rhyme off a few, the names are are smashing. Right, the names are smashing. Some of the Coastal Command airplanes. One was called the Consolidated Liberator. We, <laughs> we had the, the short Sutherland and the Boeing Fortress. Fucking any one of them, any one of them bastards. I'm into that. Probably held, probably held together with fucking beans tins and gaffer tape. You know what I mean? Beans, <laughs> the, the, the spoon or the or fork? Yeah, fork, fork indeed. <laughs> now you have another set of aircraft called the Level Bombers. And then in, in the ranks of these bastards, you had the Armstrong Hitworth. Oh, that's, that's a name, that. The Alba, Alba Marrow. 
Handley Page Hamden. The Hamley Page Hamden. Well, I always one. That's fucking smashing. And then in this film, they, they mentioned a lot at the time. They mentioned gliders getting used. So I had a wee look for some of the gliders there. They've got the Slingsby Hengist and the Waco Hadrian. So there you go. That was two gliders that were used in this film. And right off mm-hmm. the back of that, mate, you mentioned how how good this film looks. And that was the, that's the overriding thing for me above the story, above the actors, above everything. The, the use of vehicles, aircraft, buildings, settings, scenes, the, the vastness of scale, and the, the use of extras in this as well. That Gosh. was fucking... I know where the 25 million in 19, even in 1977, Aye. I know where that money's went. It's Aye. it's visually tremendous. That's it. That's how I was saying it can of be something in this film that they're criticizing. Because like, to heart back to see that scene where they're about to set off the convoy and they start bombarding the German lines first. Mm-hmm. It's like you're fucking watching a, a real battle take place. You know what I mean? Because it's fucking, because see that one, it's like, it's, it's just giving you the, the landscape and that's just fucking bombs are going to have left and right. You're going, fuck's sake, was there anything left of that countryside if these were done filming? And like you say, see the, like the battles in the cities. Let's see the way, obviously, where the Anthony Hopkins character is. How this wee place was all fine. Nice wee place to stay and all that and fucking... And then as you come near the end of the film, everything is fucking rubble. There's tanks driving through buildings and all that. It's just well done. Brilliant, man. Uh, it was smashing. Uh, pyrote- pyrotechnics must have been... Bill must have been through the roof. It was so good. Use of practical effects. Def- no CGI to the point where there was some miniature work. Use some models. Yeah. Uh, explode yourself. You can totally get that. But even they... Were kind of flawless, if you know what I mean. You're having yep. to look for them. Oh, so good, mate. Yeah, as the action in the film's superb. See the firefights and all that. It's brilliant. Like, <laughs> like even they pull bastards and how they get they get stuck in the house, sort of thing. And they're just fucking. There's guys lying here. You know what I mean? They're still fighting going on, and there's other soldiers burying other people. You know what I mean? You're just like, ah, this is fucking hellish. But Aye. There's, a, there's a good nod in this as well that I think, um, because you know it's based on a true story, to the fact that if the Germans weren't going to kill you, there was a good chance you were going to die of starvation. Because they were getting, obviously the, the routes were getting cut off, they had no way to communicate to tell them to stop dropping the, the aid and all that kind of stuff, which we'll, we'll get to because that's one of my favourite scenes that but later on. Uh, it's just... <sighs> It's just nobody. I would love people to sit and watch this. It, it disrespect our troops and what they've done for us so many years ago, man. It's, it, and that, this is just one story for a world war. Yep. Aye. Aye that's, that's, again, it's because they look, see, for this mission, right? I think it went all oh, what, <coughs> nine days, maybe, maybe 10 days. In that time, 17,000 people were killed. And that's just allied soldiers. You know what I mean? That's not even taking into consideration. See, the, like, the wee twin at Arnheim, that just get fucking flattened. You right. know what I mean? And so it was like, again, I think it was a thing that they didn't want everybody out there to know about sort of thing. The pure disregard for fucking life. You know what I mean? Because it a lot of failure can be publicised, you know what I mean? Or it's a a mark on the fucking the institution. You <laughs> know what I mean? A stain on the memory kind of thing. Uh, again, I can, I can just heart back, MD doesn't think that it was a flawless fucking campaign. It's just needs a huge exam, do you know what I mean? Um, what is some of your favourite scenes in it? Let's just oh. get right into it, mate. Well, again, <laughs> Where I where I draw comparisons with this scene with this in Black Hawk Down, right? 
not having a getting ready to go and Black Hawk down. It's like, you don't need to take water away, you mate. We'll be in and out of there in fucking jig time. You don't need to wear that body armor and all that, but we'll be fine. It's the scene where Anthony Hopkins is getting ready to go. And he's got that, um, Wix, dear boy, uh, have you packed my golf clubs? <laughs> it's like, oh, yes, sir. They'll, they'll be in the staff car. Oh, okay. What about my uh, smoker's jacket? <clears throat> well, do, do you really need that, sir? And he's like, well, let's help, sir, Wix. Let's help, sir. <laughs> Aye. This cunt is going in his head with one, you know what I mean? And it's like fucking. But like he's thinking about the <clears> dinner <throat> after the battle instead of, oh, here I might be fucking. I might be getting shot today, you know what I mean? Aye. It's fucking. And, and that attitude seems to ring out throughout this film. Aye. For a, for a stiff upper lip, almost <laughs> to the point of denial. Because they laugh after yep. it, didn't they? Yep. And then. The ranks Everything. under him just accept it. You know what I mean? Just very good, sir. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. Oh, the big, big man knows what he's into, you know what I mean? But see, I'm saying that because I read a, a bit about this. I don't know how true it is, right? But the guy <laughs> that Anthony Hopkins plays, um, seeing the Battle of Arnheim, no, and um, when Anthony Hopkins' character's like running from house to house, uh-huh. apparently the real guy pulled Anthony Hopkins up. And he's like, uh, uh, a British officer wouldn't run. He would walk in absolute disdain for the enemy fire. And I'm like, fuck is right with yours? <laughs> That's the first bit of trivia I wrote doing an awe. And I had to read it twice. Uh, I, even if you were him sending somebody out to do that perilous run, You'll be like, oh, and Jenkins, uh huh. Walk, don't run. Good chap. Fucking, it's fucking nuts, man. And it's, <clears throat> I think that's what made that scene a bit better for me because that is that guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're just like, oh, okay then. Aye. You know what I mean? Aye. But, uh, did, you man... did you manage to get the mess across? No, but the Germans just showed that we weren't really fucking caring about it anyway. <laughs> there you go. Crazy. And another one, mate, I think's brilliant because I think it, was, it just shows you that the fucking pandemonium it was. See, when it's uh, Sean Connery's character and they've picked up that wee guy after he's been shot and they're in the house and there's a couple of wee uh, a Dutch couple are fixing this guy up and they're in the middle of this conversation. The next thing I know, he walks by the window and he's just like, I hear you, you bastard, bang. <laughs> oh, you cheeky you're bastard, going, you. <laughs> you're just going this is just fucking this is chaos man like, there's fucking everything's there's, there's no lines if you know what I mean there's no that's where they are and that's where we are sort of thing well, you're right mate that is that's a good spot that actually I forgot about that till you just mentioned it again I think that was quite funny but no funny this film the, my biggest compliment I can pay this film is like Private Ryan, Seven Private Ryan, and Adrian Brody, the pianist in it. And the pianist. Their films made me actually feel scared for their soldiers because they make you feel like a normal person. And then another normal person that's got orders is just going to kill you at any minute. And I just yeah. can't get away with that. Like you said, they're walking by a windy and Sean going, Oh, yeah, fucking. Psh- you know what I mean? <laughs> it was old James Bond pose and all, by the way. <laughs> did, did, did it become matter of fact, man? Do you know what I mean? Again, it's so long that it just is. It just that's the way of the world. It's that's life. I just can't fucking get my head around that being acceptable today, or yeah. having to <laughs> think about being in that position. That's nah, it's mental, man. It's fucking. But it is, <clears throat> like you said, you've said it for that point of view, just that snap, it's me or him sort of thing, know what I mean? And you don't think it yet, uh-huh. until <laughs> like you think it. <laughs> it's, it's just, like I say, mate, there's just so much. Yet. <laughs> and then the fact that, see that as well, like he is, he's in charge of a whole like, garrison, platoon, whatever, know what I mean? And he's having to hide up my fucking attic. 
for like German patrols and all that. And you're just yeah. all like, how unorganized was this? And imagine being there, I know how fucking para you would be. <laughs> know what I mean? Oh. Well, oh shit. <laughs> Aye, again, I don't many what don't know many war films I've watched. Whatever war it is, even if it's this one, Vietnam especially as well, and just I don't, you start thinking about it in a, a level of humanity, and you're like, why are why were we fucking like that? You know what I mean? And a lot of the time, it wasn't through hatred; it was through indoctrination or fear of being shot. Anyway, if you don't do what you're told, this is this so- is all. It's like big, big people's arguments, and you're getting in. But then I suppose we've, we've watched Bravehearts, fucking same. They're not going to fight. And the wee Hingmy Sout stint, he says, No, we're not going to fight for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Aye, fucking, why should you? But it's uh, mental. Uh, fair, 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 fair fucks to you, son. But what scenes did, what scenes did you like, mate? There was a few, uh, obviously, a few thousand to pick for, but. <laughs> um, I liked, I liked the assembly, the bridge man, the son bridge get assembled and all that. I thought that was good. Yeah. It showed you a good bit of ingenuity and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing really amazing, I suppose, about it, rather than looking at it from an industrial point of view and thinking your feet. And I thought that was great. But mm. the other one I mentioned earlier on was they're all held up in the mansion or the chateau out in the middle of this idyllic fucking bit of land in it. The house looks phenomenal for outside and all that. But they're all starving. They've no ammo. They're surrounded. And they've no way of telling allied forces to no drop out in the yeah. uh, further away from the house, which they're still doing. And they're all waving and all that, frantic and desperate. And even though the guy that says, he says, look, we can do this all we want, but they've been trained no no take notice in case it's in case it's Jerry. Uh, he's still <laughs> doing it, but still doing it. I know. And this wee guy's <laughs> obviously just oh, he's just he's just had it. He's had enough. It's do or die. And he fucking bolts towards the closest parachute that's landed with something in it. And it, it manages to instill the morale with a full Band of brothers, he's making it, he's going to make it, he's going to make it. He'll never lift it. Then he lifts it. Then he turns around, he's got a big smile, and they're all like, ah, hey, hey! And then he gets <laughs> shot. And the fucking morale just seeps out of every soldier then. It's, you're up there, you're doing there with it. And then to make matters even worse, he's dropped the thing that he was carrying, and it was full of berries, full of hats. Uh-huh. Nothing that would have fed them, nothing that would have defended them. A fucking, I don't, I don't know what they were dropped for anyway. You know what I mean, <laughs> yeah, just in case you've lost your beret. <laughs> but is that is that is that again? Is that a whole fucking thing? Ah, uh, you look your best while we're winning. You know what I mean? And it was like, <clears throat> but you're like, it's, it's kind of a shite that you bit into it. You're like, ah, aye, that fucking that, that that's a shite that that, that <laughs> young that boy there just fucking. Aye, because you get up with him. He's gone. He he's gone. He... But I know he's not going to fucking make it. I know he's going. I've not seen this, but I know he's getting shot. <laughs> fucking right, he's getting shot. But I'm like, I don't know, is he? Is he? And Aye. and this the good thing about this film is as well, <clears throat> unlike other films, you don't see the snipers. It never shows you the snipers. Aye. So that makes me think that's just like what they're feeling. They don't know where the snipers are. Whereas in other films, it'll show you for the the German snipers point of view and all that stuff. A wee tiny mm-hmm. thing that. That I thought was very fuck with they? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But aye, it's fucking. Because there's a, there's another bit like that in this. See, obviously Robert Redford's character, they've taken the bridge and all that, and then the next sort of cutscene, and he's arguing with the guys, like where the tanks. He's like, you're just going to fucking stop. But like, Arnheim's right there. You know what I mean? And you're like that and all. Aye. You're just gonna stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Aye. After what they pull bastards just done and all to fucking roam across this river, getting all shot to fuck. Exactly. That see the important thing about that that scene there as well. Obviously, it's an American arguing with a senior officer for Britain. So even though they're for different factions, 
they know they're on the same side and they still respect the guy's rank. He doesn't just go against them. And the British superior, you can see in his face, he, he doesn't want to tell him no. He doesn't want to no go and help. He says, I've got to. I've got to obey orders. You know what I mean? That's fucking shite. But like that, Aye. you're talking about the boats. The Robert Redford and that. That's where I mentioned cannon fodder. Yes. <clears throat> they are. <laughs> they get the boats first of all. He goes like, but fucking, what did you, the soldiers are all like, is that it? What did you expect? <laughs> fucking bombers. Do you know what I mean? Aye. And then. Again, see, see for anybody that's not seen this. See the wee travel balls you take for your dog? That's literally what their boats are. It's like canvas. You know what I mean? Aye. I wouldn't bought them. I wouldn't frame and canvas around the sides. Oh, here, fuck's sake. Never even knew the kind of things existed. And then <clears throat> they go over the most open stretch of water for miles. They're just getting into this water, sitting fucking ducks. And they've not even got oars. It does mention, it says, if you've not got an oar, use the butt of your rifle, but paddle for your life. You don't, don't see one fucking oar. It is. It's all butts of rifles, yeah. isn't it? Yep, that's ah, totally fucked. <laughs> totally fucked. You know what I mean? And because let's well, see if you go back to like the, the beginning of the film, and it's the Michael Caine character, and uh, is it something Fox, Edward Fox or something? And they're driving down in this we, and they're driving by all these guys, and the the motorcade sort of thing. And he's going like, oh, Jerry, how you doing? And all that. How's the wife in the veins? Ah, thank you very much, sir. You know what I mean? And it's all his optimism. And then, boom, fucking, it's no abject failure, but it is. It's a pure kick in the buzz. You know what I mean? And you're just like, <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? Just fucking. And even that's greeted with the attitude of, yeah, didn't go to plan, did it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Hey, I guess. Apparently that was a big thing as well. Um, the Duck Bogart character. Apparently they weren't happy with how he was kind of shown on screen. Like it was kind of he was left with a dairy for that sort of thing. Because this, they of the opinion that like they couldn't criticise Montgomery for it or the Goatmare Peltles, but I think his family and all that, or people that knew that guy, says he was kind of left taking responsibility for this failed thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. Whereas, in actual fact, it was him and another eight intelligence officers, so there was nine of them. You know what I mean? It wasn't mm. just done to him. Uh, Aye. Bit of shit, that, innit? Aye. Plus, he did. <clears throat> he, he says to the uh, Sean uh, Connery's character, I did say, I thought we were going to bridge too far. Know what I mean? But apparently he did say that at the first meeting. Know what I mean? It wasn't like a thing going, it wasn't like, a, <clears throat> well, I did say bridge too far. Know what I mean? Wink, wink. <laughs> know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> oh, what you like, you fucking mad bastard. <laughs> I was kind of uh, reading an obit, Sean Connery said, um, obviously played one of the largest roles in the movie as General Workup, but he was angered to discover that Robert Redford, in a much smaller role, was getting considerably, considerably more money. I wonder how much that was. It went so Sean Connery went on strike for a short time until his fee was adjusted to his satisfaction. <laughs> Where are you, you little shite? My name's James Bond. How come he's getting twenty seven pounds an hour more than me? Give a bottle <laughs> fucking slap. <laughs> oh, fucking brilliant. You can just imagine him, can't you? Fucking Michael Caine and that all sitting going. See you all about. I know. But a uh, big scene Canary was kind of peaky his powers. Having said that, Robert Redford wasn't a fucking strengthened violet either. He was your... Uh, mm-hmm. I always think of him as being that generation's Brad Pitt. Fucking mm. handsome bastard in a lot of films. But I'd say maybe he's a better actor than Brad Pitt. It, just, it looks like Brad Pitt, I think. But the fuck, he's getting mm. a fucking strong jawline on it. But... <laughs> Uh, the boy James can, I know. He must have been fucking up there. I mean, that's how, see when you see this this cast, you're like, oh, fucking hell, man. It must have been all the faces. Know what I mean? Uh, Even fucking big Lawrence Olivier. Know what I mean? Him cutting about. 
Aye. Fucking Gene Hackman, Gene Hackman I know. Oh mate. It's... There the, that could be my one criticism of the film. Gene Hackman's Polish accent. I'm like that. I keep trying to catch <laughs> it and I'm going, are you doing it or are you not doing it? Aye, I forgot you mentioned it was Polish <clears throat> in this. <laughs> and obviously I get my genes mixed up last week and I, I thought Aye. it was Gene Wilder again. Uh, spazzy. <laughs> uh, but I, I couldn't understand what he was saying at the start. I knew he was Aye. a bit pissed off with what was happening. But I was like, <laughs> Is that now? Is that in? And then at the very just... end, when he paratroops out the plane, he shouts something before he goes, and I'm like, what? What the uh... fuck? <laughs> Aye. What is it? Fucking God bless General Montgomery or something? I'm like, that. Was, was that what he says? Aye. <laughs> Aye, I'm like, what the fuck, man? But... Oh, they could have shouted, Robin, Robert Lewandowski! Yeah! <laughs> or whatever before he dropped it. Oh. Uh, Favourite scenes? Again, mate. No, a favourite, but a spectacle throughout the millennium was just after that, the, the paratroopers <clears throat> all jump out the planes and all that. And the minute their parachutes opened, they're just getting fucking picked off by Germans. Aye. Like, uh, oh, machine gun in there. Again, man. So just like being out in a boat or being dangling, floating in the air, waiting for a bullet to fucking hit you, must have been. It's, it's a, just a pure thought-provoking movie, mate. For that Aye. aspect, I can't imagine just waking up every day, wondering how you might die that day, man. No, <laughs> under somebody's fucking order. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's fucking. What it says, mate. It's like I think that is where the criticism comes from. Because it was like the there were so many people had. Like problems with this plan, right? Because mm-hmm. even if you see that aspect, I don't know, there's one road all the way. Had the fucking Germans just decided to bomb that road? That's your plan fucked. So, what was the contingency? You know what I mean? Aye. Aye, because it's... there was a great shot at the near enough to start the film. Hey, let me tell you where it was. It was, is it the German Dutch border, which the Allies are holding at that point? before they embark and there's us again the camera rises and shows you this vast fucking area filled with tanks and guns and planes and lorries and jeeps just the fucking artillery is amazing but for all the tanks they don't fucking use them in the film I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this... oh always the bridesmaid <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's always the German tanks, man. Seems to be that. And apart from Fury, obviously, which is a fucking stupendous movie. Uh, Aye. German tanks just seem to be the fucking daddy in most war films, didn't they? Uh, the tiger, the tiger, and the Panzer. The Panzer. To be... I love saying uh... that. Oh, the Panzer. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of tank do you drive? The Panzer. No. Oh, my little tank. <laughs> Rene. Oh, my little tank. <laughs> so everyone get in the pool. I know we can't we can't get through a Modern War Two film without shouting the flashing nubs. No doubt that about two series. Oh fucking hell, man! Oh, mate, it's not that all right. It's obviously, the it's showing you aspects of things that this plan that's already like, no gonna work. Before they go into the plan. So, see the radios? They know they've got a problem with the radios. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. They, they knew it didn't have the, the mileage to... And they still went ahead with it, I know. You know what I mean? Right. But I don't know how true this is, right? But see, apparently, if they'd used the phones, they would have been able to communicate with each other. So simple, it might just work. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking... No, I don't know, man. I don't know. But... There was another thing I know, and see this, see when the, the soldiers are getting parachuted out, and you're seeing it from the, the soldier's point of view when he's jumping the plane, I thought that was well done, I know. It was great. It was, it was well done. 
I, as I say, visually, this film is a masterpiece for its time. It's a year older than me, you know what I mean? Which is quite young. <laughs> nah, is it fuck? 40, 47 years ago, man. You're talking nearly half a century for a film to look as good. As I say, I managed to get the uncut version, which was digitally remastered, and it looked smashing. It didn't look like watching a grainy old fucking 70s film. Uh, it was stunning. The visuals mm. and, and all that for me were vastly superior to the way the story was told. I go to the story and I go to all. I just think there was a wee bit of fluidity that was lacking that seemed to jump quite a lot. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just to get the headline actor in at that time that didn't stitch in with that last wee bit. I just seen my only real criticism about it. But uh, you can't you can't sit here and critique who drink a Michael Caine or Sean Connery or Gene Hackman or fucking Robert Redford. <laughs> no, I think, think they were, think they were all right, aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> I know what I mean. Aye. But the cast, like, the cast does their job. You know what I mean? James Caan plays the angry American guy because a medic snowed in his fucking job. Box ticked. You know what I mean? Sean Connery being fucking an imposing, large, fucking respectable character. Yeah. Box ticked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you read about <laughs> fucking <laughs> Michael Caine in the tanks as well? I know. So, just for for listeners, Sir Michael Caine claims that director Sir Richard Attenborough didn't tell him that a string of dummy tanks behind the scout car which Caine was riding in would be blown up so that so that Caine would look realistically startled during the shot. So he's riding <laughs> these things. Doesn't know they're going to get blown up. What a fucking bastard. <laughs> it's okay, Michael. Just done that for visual effects, you see? I dare you. You fucking, you Larry cunt. <laughs> Oi, dick. Nah. <laughs> You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here's, here's your dinner. He's talking to the other boys. They're like, Michael, what did they do that for? Some directors. Just want to watch the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done, sir. You played that in very well. I love a segue. <laughs> When I was in Italy, drinking my kiki braca. <laughs> you sit down beside me, and sometimes you've got you've got a girl there, and I'm happy for you. You nod at me, and I'll nod at you. <laughs> <laughs> we Anthony Hawkins, he's just walking about the whole time going, Hello, Clarice. <laughs> it's, it's no man, anybody. It's Clarence. Clarence. I've told you this five times already. Oh, He'd have loved it during the war. He'd have just been in roaming the battlefield, eating kidneys and bits of stomach and the like. He'd have loved that shit. Oh, dear. He's like, I've eaten the hearts of our enemies and we get their strength. We bloody don't. You put off your nut. Eat their penises and get their hard ones, you see. Hmm. Bobby on a stick, I call that. Would you like to join me in a Bobby on a stick? <laughs> uh, Bobby on a stick. A calm dog, is it? Arsehole. Who are you call an arsehole? No. Do you want an arsehole? <laughs> oh, fucking hunters. Arseholes here. Oh, fucking hell, man. Oh, dear. Oh. This, is, this is the comedy oh. part of the podcast. People just <laughs> talking a lot of shit. Uh, uh, eating arseholes and dicks on sticks. A wee bag Carnival of toes. Food, for- is it? Here's a wee bag of toes for the road. Eh? Or some finger oh. food. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, some finger oh, food. fucking hell, man. Have you got any favourite oh, lines oh. in the film, mate? Any pieces of dialogue that... Oh. <laughs> well, will rummage around it's... your brain forever? Well, there's two I wrote down, but there is all sorts again, but... Obviously, the first one is when the German comes across the bridge, like, my commander says you should surrender. <laughs> and Anthony Hopkins is like, tell him to go to hell. Because, I'm sorry, we don't have the facilities to accommodate you. <laughs> eh? Uh? <laughs> I'm sorry, but we cannot accept your surrender. Is there anything else? Uh? <laughs> I don't know you guys are. That. <laughs> That's so good. That's fucking. 
Amazing. It's, it's just, it's, it's a little, uh, fuck you, we're no getting up sort of thing, but it was like very gentleman-like. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sorry, we would like to, but we don't have facilities. <laughs> See all the while that he's saying it, Tony Hopkins is beside him just going, uh, we, we half smile. Yeah, that'll taste them. <laughs> Take that, you bitch. That's brilliant. Oh, one, of my, one of my best bits of dialogue is towards the end, and it's uh, Frost and Carlisle. And uh, Carlisle's dying, obviously. And Frost, hello, Harry. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harry, I always wanted to ask you, but didn't, because I knew you so very much wanted me to, and I didn't want to give you the satisfaction, but why do you always carry an umbrella? <laughs> and we, Carlyle, bad memory. Never could remember the password. Knew no Jerry would carry one and had to prove I was an Englishman, you see. <laughs> it's just yeah. fucking to the end, you know what I mean? Right. Out of humor to the end, man. Uh, is that again funny, that, like, funny that, and touching and sad, man? So it was aye, and it's that upper lip thing again, isn't it? Fucking, it's aye, it's good, man. It's fucking. I'm, I'm it surprised it? British soldiers could see because their fucking boat lip must have been away up there. I mean, ah, well, my boat looked like a cape. Aye, I'll have to turn around and face you because my brass neck won't let me turn my head. You see. <laughs> but the, the other one I've wrote down is uh, Sean Connery's character and he's like he says they, they told us to hold out here for two days we've been here nine know what I mean and you're just going fuck's sake man how fucked was this aye that's that's no late, you know what I mean? That's for what about Pish, really. Exactly. No, I mean, and then you're like, I don't know, kudos for yous for fucking little hoarding out that length of time, you know what I mean? Uh, you're right, mate. Because when I heard that as well, the first thing I thought it was, it's no one of people defect. No one of people just fuck off and try to escape Aye. the army. Do you know what I mean? Because I would have thought that, listen, this is four days now. They're not coming. Five days. They forgot about us. They think we're not. I mean, they think we're dead. Aye, exactly. Time to time to peel off and make myself across the water there. But <laughs> I just it was. It gave you a lot because you obviously you're watching this for yourself and you're seeing everybody's lying wounded and all that going off. Oh, fuck's sake, they're getting battled, but they've been getting battled for fucking nine days. Know what I mean? True. And you're Very like that. Oh fuck. Another one. And, that, uh... Sorry, on you go. No, it's just because they'll run out of supplies and run out of ammunition and all that shit, know what I mean? And it's like... Fucking... Running run out of Chinese surprises. <laughs> Supplies! <laughs> <laughs> One of the best lines in it, and I want everybody to open their ears and hear this, because it's true in life, as it is in this movie. And it's Sean Connery's character, who's Major General Urquhart, I thought everybody knew that God was a Scotsman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking to you. <laughs> ah, you're oh, yourself, oh, there, son. <laughs> but it's a bit of odd. There's a line between uh, Stout and Vandalo. And he goes, I'm Bobby Stout. <laughs> and Vandalo says, Have you ever been liberated before, Bobby? But was, I got divorced twice. Does that count? <laughs> That counts. <laughs> yes, I think it does. <laughs> I can see that bit at all. He goes, <clears throat> I can't remember what it is they're calling, see the bridge stuff? Is uh, it the, uh, like, just call it the Heather or something like that? And he goes, have you got any of that Heather crap? And he's like, do hmm, you mean that perfect pinpoint precision of British engineering? He's like, aye, that's right. <laughs> Uh, no, have its where where have its time British ingenuity, yeah, that's the stuff. Yeah, no. plenty of it. 
but it's fucking... so good. But see, I know we're talking about how the, the soldiers are getting like fucking done in here and all that. Because like, that's what Art Carter says. I know he's like, I took what was it, ten thousand men, into Arnheim, and I've come out with less than two. You're know, like that. Ah, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> no, I mean, like, how do you feel about that shit? No, I mean, aye, and that's <clears> just one campaign that he he's talking about. He's probably been there for fucking a tour. Well, it's probably probably the duration of the war, maybe. Lost yeah. hundreds of thousands of fucking troops, which must doesn't matter how hardened a, a, a war veteran or general or whatever you are at, you must be lying in your bed one night thinking, fuck, under yeah. my command, I lost Definitely. so many people. It's never uh, highlighted met the meeting in Saving Private Ryan when uh, Tom Hanks talks about it for a wee bit in the church at night yeah. and all that and you're like ah, fuck right enough you've got a conscience you know what I mean and then he has his wee breakdown and he cries without anybody seeing him yeah like, ah, powerful shit man yep but, <clears throat> as well as see the soldiers not all getting fucking it shows you the cost eh, what's happening with eh, just the civilians and all look see the wee the, the civilians in Arnheim and all that and then obviously that wee boy with the glasses gets shot you know what I mean? And you just get this big bastard and tank rolling up the street, and you're like that going, Aye. fuck's sake. And then, obviously, at the very end of the film, when the soldiers are pulled out, and that woman had like, this big fucking like, manor house, and it's just decimated, and all your belongings are in a cart, and it's like, right, Moan? Like, going, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> what about the wee, the wee old woman that fucking Aye. gives out to shout for a taxi? Oh, it's the taxi! Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see the soldiers lying there. He's fucking he on a band. Not a, what, what did grandmother say? You know, I think she wants a taxi. There I go. That's fuck. Uh, she gets all dolled up before she goes out and on looks at people as if to say, fucking who's some ass? I'm going to get a taxi. Uh, Come away, uh, Morrisons. Uh, boys will be boys. And then fucking I, boom. Ah, she got shot in the street. But uh, see, even that, and all right, obviously, the Germans that eventually overwhelm uh, Frost's like, soldiers and all that, right? And they're all just lying there, see, all injured, and Robbo and all that. And so, like, Anthony Hopkins is just sitting there, like, looking at his nails, just couldn't he be any more? Fuck you. Uh, Aye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even when he tries to get up the stair, the stairs full of people wounded. Nobody moves for him. Right. <laughs> Just letting him out. Did you see, see that? I saw right. no, go it. Go. Just a funny bit. Uh, when Hancock offers Sean Connery a cup, a cup of tea. Aye. Just hands. He goes, "Sir, hands my cup." And fucking Sean Connery looks and goes, "Hancock, I've got lunatics laughing at me from the woods. My original plan has been scuppered now that the jeeps haven't arrived." My communications are completely broken down. Do you really believe any of that can be helped by a cup of tea? <laughs> I got, couldn't hurt, sir. <laughs> ah, fucking, yes! Oh, mate. <clears throat> fucking pure nation of tea drinkers, man. Because I'll cut just take it off. Was was like, ah, yeah, touche. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't hurt, sir. Look, fuck off, you. Fuck off. Bro, wait. Is this the see after he says that? Like, good and hurt, sir. You're just waiting a jingle coming for Tetley tea bags or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, jingles. You doing that leads me to my biggest fucking bugbear of this whole film. And it's the score. Aye, uh, fucking... I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, for day dot in this film, it must be played. 375,000 times it, and it just gets played for everything. A wee success story. Da -da 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 That's not a tune, right? It just went right out of my head. But <laughs> somebody kind of got a packet of biscuits opened and then gets the biscuits <laughs> opened. Da -da 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 wee Davies constipated for five days, kind of shite. Suddenly somebody's outside the door and you hear a plop. <laughs> You're like, fucking spare me, man. 
See, I know that it probably wasn't done for this purpose, but see what I've kind of got that into my head it was the we're on, we're way, we're not, we're on. Ah, this is it. Aye, aye, exactly what it was for. Then we're going, shards on, lads. You know what I mean? Fucking uh, every cloud. That's fucking play, play the tune. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fucking but aye. Margaret, Margaret Sorry. eventually lost three stone and I'm getting into that dress. See the thing as well, and all let's see the when the, the plan eventually starts and it's that big general who thinks, Oh fuck, they're here to catch me. Let's get out of here, you know what I mean? Aye, aye. And then they find the plans and that glider, you know what I mean? Shit. And they disregard them and go like this is propaganda. This is a lot of shit. Know what I mean? And it's like, eventually they, they fucking tip all that. Oh, here, hold on, they know. This is right. You're just going, what the fuck, man? Aye, uh, that glider they found the plans in, that was actually the Waco Hadrian. Uh, just, <laughs> cause somebody thinks I don't know my fucking aircraft here, you know? <laughs> I just fell off my table. Oh. But, oh, just, but the follow my all, mate. One four BAFTAs. You can't, and it was nominated for another five or something. So it did get the nods. So, but again, makes me wonder again why it was why it's been criticised so much. Uh, I think you've I think you've uh, answered it, mate. I think it was the uh, the public uproar about the real story getting brought out. I can only mm. imagine it was that. Um, is it a perfect? It's not a perfect film, by the way, but it's a fucking epic, man. It's, a, it's actually. I'm so glad I watched it. So am I. Yeah, you're talking about awards and all that. First thing that jumps out at you was kind of Star Wars, kind of swept the boards that year. Yeah. I don't know too many other films that were out. Superman the movie came out seventy eight year mm -hmm. later. That was born or seventy seven. Can't remember. Uh, but for such a cast, man. Makes Expendables look like a fucking afternoon play. <laughs> aye. Aye. So I was thinking, I don't know, is this like the first kind of film of its kind where it's like the big ensemble cast? You know what I mean? It's not like leading man, leading <clears throat> lady, and then spatting it, but it just seemed fucking that many people involved. You know what I mean? You, you mentioned it earlier on, uh, Kelly's Heroes, which I think is a fucking tremendous movie. Uh, that's um, super it's maybe man. seen the cast in that and gone, oh, fucking. I'll see you, Kelly's hero. And I'll raise you. <laughs> and I'll, the Dirty Dozen, can't remember when that was it. That was just after this or before it as well. Another mm -hmm. war film with another tremendous cast. Uh, Dirty Dozen, there was a folly up to that as well. A dozen more or something. Yeah. Uh, right. Or another 12 or something. I can't remember. It was great epic movies, man. So they were. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, don't make them like that anymore. Well, the day better. Yeah. CGI didn't the lights there, you know, but Aye. but see another thing I thought was superb, right? <clears throat> see the bridge that they're fighting there. It has now been renamed the John Frost Bridge. So see in Holland, it all goes Van 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 der Hunk, eh, Van Hoydonk, <laughs> fucking Van Bronkost, John Frost. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> right, so how how do we get to Uranus? Or oh, well, first you come up um, Reykjavik uh, Road there, and then and then we go across John Frost Bridge and a uh, uh, Bratwurst. Like... <laughs> yes, hello, welcome, welcome to Arnhem in Holland. Uh, we'd like to show you all the shites, uh, take you all the nice places, places with lots of history. Go to Root Hullet House, uh, over to Arthur Newman uh, Boulevard, and cross over. John Frost Bridge. You mean Jana Frost? No, it's John Frost. John Frost. Maybe go over there, make porn. Make a porno. <laughs> Get some prizes. It's fucking, <laughs> it's fucking so bad, wasn't it? Like that. But so, so we're going to Arnheim via fucking Bradford. Plus. Hey, Ash Halls. It's the John Frost Bridge. Isn't that weird? <laughs> 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 uh, put it in the skin box, please. <laughs> oh. oh, you can't beat the Dutchman. What a people. 
Oh, they're but, glorious people. I'll go one day. I will go one day. But aye. As a movie, mate, I think this. this eh? <laughs> You're just going to ask you, but you're going to ask me. I think as a whole, what do you think? Uh, oh, superb, mate. There's a select few war films I can watch because certain ones are all very like the the good guys don't get shot and all that. Know what I mean? All that stuff like charge on or that shit. Know what I mean? Soon you kind of get something that's a bit more realistic. You go, aye. aye. Well, but after three hours up. of epic battle, everybody made it back alive. <laughs> mm, did they? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, what you like? You know what I mean? Looking guys catching fucking grenades and throwing them back and all that. You know what I mean? God, fuck off. But aye, aye. The acting, the effects, the this because that's another thing. Yeah, I don't. I really think you've seen seen like some war films. You didn't see the cities they were battling in being destroyed. You know what I mean? And fucking tanks and that just driving. Like, it shows you how it started, how it ended up, sort of thing. You either go into a scene and the place is already decimated. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that's mental. Aye. I'm I'm a weirdo in that sense. Watching war films and watching towns being destroyed and watching half a church. You know what I mean? Or like. A building with a living room exposed because there's no roof, it's been blown off. I'm, I always think, I wonder how long it took to that we tune to get back in its feet. I wonder how long it took to rebuild that. Did they rebuild it? Uh, Did they just bulldoze the tune? Did they move it down the road and start to get it? It's fucking weird going through my. But very quickly, the boys and I, my sons and I, we went to sleep last night <coughs> watching Wally, which I hadn't seen in its entirety up until maybe a month ago, and now I've seen it 40 times, right? What a film, by the way, Wally is. Aye. What a thought provoker. But at the end of Wally, spoiler alert, they come back to Earth, right? And then the credits rolling for getting out, there's a wee montage of how they rebuild and the restructure and all that, and it shows you the robots helping build the cathedrals and all that again, and I'm like, I just thought about a bridge too far. Rebuilding and all that. I mean, it's mental, just <laughs> fucking dump my head. I've got that tangent it's... there, didn't I? Aye. But even, let us say, I don't know, see the, the display of all the military stuff, like the planes, tanks, motors, and all that. It's just, ticks all the boxes for me. You know what I mean? Aye. See, even if that was just rolled out a museum or barracks across the country, just for one still shot, one pan of shot, what a fucking movement. Mm. A fucking industry that must have took to get all that there at that one time it's amazing yep. man uh, even the, the big mass fucking parachute jump and all that I know see so just fucking the amount of people are flying out airplanes mate just to get like Aye. to reenact this thing because that was the fucking I mean, kid on and that was the CGI there was one guy coming down in the parachute you seen him fucking doing that you like, yep. fucking amazing I want to watch it again <laughs> <clears throat> as to enjoy it I was watching it to critique it and uh, note it and all that there and I maybe missed quite a bit of it never right into it plus I missed the subtitles and as much as I I knew it was going on I'd like to see the dialogue between the, the Germans and the Dutch and all that as well yeah. so but even with that mate uh, I'll, I'll fucking fire an 8 an 8 out of 10 at it you know? yeah. uh, that's the same as me mate an 8 it's a smash me for them that just it's well under the radar with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Well, it's to my knowledge anyway, you know what I mean? Anytime I've asked, someday if they've seen it, they've not. Which I hundred percent. I mean definitely under my radar, I'll tell you. I mean, because everybody's seen fucking uh, the great escape, you know what I mean? So but that, again that's what I'm talking about. See that that was always put on the telly. It's the great mm-hmm. escape. Because it was, oh, that's a win for us. When's the last time a bridge too far was on the telly? Know what I mean? Never seen it. Never heard it. If I have seen it, I don't remember it. But everybody I've spoke to, fucking, oh, yeah, it's fabulous film. Again, Facebook page, we got a bit of feedback. Half it. Paul for Seismic as well. Says it was one of the, uh, the last film him and his dad watched together as well, which is fucking kind of touching. Aye, he's grander. Uh, aye, grander, sorry. <laughs> and for that, Paul, I hope we've done you justice. I hope you... Go back and watch the film. Um, 
after listening to this pod or vice versa, whatever, and have a wee smile and a wee half to your 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 late papa, granda, whatever it is you you refer to him as. But there we go, folks. That was a bridge too far, but I feel it wasn't a bridge too far. You know that way. No, it's like, just I, just no, it was like Goldilocks. It was just right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're hitting it with now. Jesus Christ. No. Oh, it's nearly drinking a clock for you, isn't it? Oh, fuck's mm-hmm. sake. No, is it fuck? I'm, fuck, I'm joining the monastery. Uh, you've got another, what, two days to get your body clock back and sink and your toxins eradicated for your bloodstream, aren't you? No, that's that. Well, margaritas. No, I mean, that, that's my cocktail of choice anyway, mate. Margaritas. And see when I, I found the means of being able to make them in the house. I just had to do it. I bet. It was, it was, it was too good. What's involved in a margarita for somebody that's virgin to a margarita? Well, uh, tequila, lime juice, triple sec, which is really pointro, ice, a wee bit of salt around the rim there. But I was making Stone Cold Steve Austin ones, right? He's got his own specific recipe. And he puts... Must have been Grand gla- Marionier. Must have been no, glass I mean, everywhere puts... and you were smashing the tumbles together, fuck's sake. <laughs> but he puts that in it as well, you know what I mean? So it was like fucking... Oh, it was a festivities of delight, so it was... Ah, it looked but... nice. Ah, uh, oh, it was. Trust me, it was. <laughs> Plus, you're, you're, you're like your, 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 cis- your citrus, didn't you? Oh, you know what I mean? So, it's right up your street. Uh, you, you eventually got one... You got a wee bit of lime into one at the end there. If the photos yeah, you took, <laughs> fucking garnished and everything. Uh, <clears throat> uh, cause I never understood that shit. But oh, here's here's a piece of mint on the top of your drink, sir. Uh, does that help with taste? No, just for display. Uh, don't be wrong. I, I was fucking... looked at my heat. Oh, I always looked at my heat when I thought, who the fuck wants a branch in their fucking tumbler? You know what I mean? But aye, I, I see that. That's another one, and it's like drinking toothpaste water or something like that. Hey, Dean. <laughs> well, I've, I'm just going to say I've only had two margaritas. Uh, what did I just call that? Drink ya? Mojitos. Mojitos. I've only had two in my life, and they were abroad in the uh, Turkey, and they were the most delicious things I've ever tasted in my fucking life. But I've never had one since. I don't want to ruin that memory, but it always <laughs> reminds me of fucking gladiator. I mean, they're sitting with a big leafy drink, it's not that. <laughs> Aye. Uh, but that was it. I mean, because the Euros are on, so you're not really going to be doing much. You know what I mean? So if you're just going to sit there and fucking vegetate, you may as well. Because I'm going to say something very controversial. Oh. International football is fucking shit. So anything that helps it along. Aye. Have you not been pleasantly surprised by opening this tournament, though? Aye, aye, so far, but this is what usually happens. See the first couple of games, it's all oh, fucking back and forth and all that, and then see when it comes down to right, what do, do we need to qualify? That's when you start, it reverts back to the same old shit. Aye, aye, it's not just fucking go for it scenario anymore. Aye. In fact, I'll be even more con- well, no controversial because it's the truth. The worst two games have involved the worst, uh, the two favourites for me. I think the England game was horrible and I thought the France game was worse last night that was shocking Aye. France were a bit toothless they were fawn about the place playing to the referee who was shocking he just stopped the game every three seconds especially in that first half and yep. jumped for a wee bit of luck Austria would have got a point out of that no bother you know what I mean no no Aye, for the, the players on show that they didn't didn't live up to any height you know what I mean so, but uh, my my bet my bet my money I, I put on a, a team to win it is playing the night Portugal. So we'll see how they fare. Hopefully they're not a damp squib and all, because uh, my wee boy wants to see Ronaldo. So there we go. But apart from the Euros, mate, what's next week's optical delight? <laughs> it's a belter. It's a. I'll go as far as to say it's a fucking belter. Oh. Ah! Ah! They're in the house. Ah! Ah! Grab the kids. Ah!
You know where it is? Aye. But go see it. Anchorman. Uh, Sky rocket in flight. Ooh, afternoon delight. Hey, afternoon delight. So there we go. It's been long, long time coming. Fuck. Fucking oh, needs no introduction, mate, does it? No. Laugh a minute. Nah, of course it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh a minute. Absolutely. So we'll do that. Don't know when we'll do it. Big man here has put in for a bit of overtime next week, so uh, depending on how you're feeling, if you still want to do it next week, we could go for a wee night time recording. It's up to you, but we'll see how we're, yeah. see how we're feeling. I'll see how you feel after your, your extra 12 hours there. I, I'll be fine to do it, you know what I mean? I, yeah. uh, but just Well, you're off Monday, Tuesday, didn't you? So I'll be working. Aye, mm. we'll talk about it after. Uh, so Aye. thanks very much, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to us. Thanks for watching us. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting. I always say at the end of this, every pod, this series, um, word of mouth is how we grow, and there's never been a truer fact. You can have all the social plat- uh, platforms known to man and still reach nobody. But when somebody says to you, here, listen to that, or you send them a WhatsApp with a link or something, just say, listen to that, it's funny. That helps. That's that's the true yeah. barometer because that's what I do. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't actively seek out new podcasts. I, but if my pals send it to me or somebody I respect sends it to me, I'll get a go. No bother. Uh, and then you can make your mind up. So do that for us. People will, will be thoroughly appreciative. Yes. Yes. And again, thanks for tuning in, listening, liking, telling your people. You know what I mean, and hopefully we made you laugh again. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully you have a bit more uh, respect for the the troops there. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the machine gun out, won't you? <laughs> Couldn't hurt, sir. <laughs> right, it's chilly bye uh, for me anyway. See you next week. Chilly bye. <laughs> the views and opinions of this podcast are solely our own, with no direct intention to offend or upset. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant.